from the campus of Harbor High School, Community TV is proud to bring you the 2013-2014 SCCAL Wrestling Championships. Hello again, everybody, and I'm with the legend here, Mr. Pat Level. I'm Kurt Edwards. Looking forward to an evening of great wrestling from the high school level. Before I bring in Pat, hang on a second, Pat. A quick little note to our sponsors, Live Shots. Cut weight, not nutrition. Give them a holler on, or look them up on the web at liveshots.com. Sid Smokehouse, barbecue pizza, burgers. Oh, I love all of that stuff, folks. Something for the entire family. They're on the web at www.sidssmokehouse.com. Aptos High Athletics, teach your youth important lessons on and off the mat. Craft Body Shop, quality work locally, and KP Construction, construction you can count on. Now to bring in the legend, Mr. Pat Level, also known as the commissioner. Pat, the, the wrestlers are lining up in front of us. You got every weight class from 106 to 285. You're wrestling the 285 guy. I don't want anything to do with that one. Too big for me. Okay, not, not that I heard of. Who are some of these wrestlers you know, we're going to be looking at this, this evening? Well, I think uh, probably one of the, the best guys we have is... is um, is ranked very, very high, and it's Brian Batisto from Harbor High School. Brian is ranked way up there. I think he might be number one in the, in the CCS this year. Um, we have a, a young lady here who is uh, Domino Parrish, who is the CCS champion in the women's division, who will be going to the state championship next year, I mean next week, and uh, she's the number one seed, I think, at her weight class. She was a runner-up last year in the state championship. I'm just sorry we don't get to see her wrestle tonight. Um, the Zacharias boys from Aptosh are both very, very capable young men uh, that we'll see tonight, along with uh, their heavyweight Alex Marquez is ranked up in the CCS. So, uh, and, and Noah Tall from uh, Harbor and uh, uh, Andy Garcia from Scotts Valley. So we've got a, a, a good class of kids. Uh, I can't run over all of them at this point, but as the matches go on, we'll talk more about them. Well, they've already gone through all the preliminaries. We had the JVs wrestle, and then the, the, all the classes had to whittle the soy down to the, the varsity level. People who, some of these parents have had to go through tournament wrestling like the Coast Classic. How much of a grind is that on the wrestlers to wrestle, wrestle, wait? before you get back on the mat for the final one. Yeah, that, that you know, it, it's, it's really a bad battle of waiting a lot of time. Kids have to really persevere because what happens is, you know, in a tournament, a tournament round takes quite a while. You know, the first round takes about three hours or so. The second round, nobody is eliminated yet. The second round, when you drop down to the next group of people, takes about three hours of that, then the consolation starts. So it's a long haul, it's a long day for those kids. And uh, you know, I know from experience going through that when I was a wrestler, being a heavyweight, you, you always wrestled last. So I knew what it was like to sit and wait and wait. And uh, I admire these kids for the, for the perseverance that they have. They do that one. And we're talking about a weight shift. 285 is the top end of this scale. 106 is the bottom end of that scale. I'm, I'm going to guess it's pretty easy to make weight when you're wrestling 220 and 285. Yeah, usually, usually, usually it is. Now, <clears throat> this season when we were doing our when we were doing our weight uh, certification for wrestlers, we were doing it. I had wrestlers that were up over 300 pounds, and they didn't seem to be concerned be concerned about. Uh, you know, cutting down weight because they were at 300 pounds, but by the time the season started or we got going, it'd be 285 pounds. We're going to get it a pause for just a second. We'll be back with you as we pause for our national anthem. All right, we're going to have a little pause here, but we'll stay with it. These kids are getting off the mat. They'll do a little bit of a warm-up, and then we are going to go grappling. I realize it's the Winter Olympics, but folks, Wrestling is one of the original sports of the Olympic Games way back yonder when Pat and I were just kids. <laughs> <laughs> that is correct. Or maybe I was a kid and, yeah. and, and you weren't at yeah. that point yeah. in time. 
<laughs> but what a great history wrestling has you know, in the States. And, and you've had an opportunity to officiate wrestling and be with the Olympics for quite a number of years. But tell me just a little bit about your experience with the Olympics and some of the amateurs that is going around. Well, you know, it was back in the horse and buggy days when I did it, you know, and we, we when he went to school, you ran uphill both directions, coming in the and snow. going in the snow. So it was a different, uh, different breed of cat back in those days. But no, really, it was uh, a great experience for me in my career uh, to be able to do what I had done, you know, getting a college scholarship to Cal Poly and participating there and then hooking on with the Olymp Olympic Club in San Francisco where it was a whole new world for me in wrestling. And when I didn't, when I wasn't gonna get a shot in the NFL at the time, or where I was trying to hook on, actually with the AFL, with the Raiders or the Chargers, didn't happen, so I went the wrestling trail and it, it really paid off for me. You know, all the accolades I got, I'll give credit to my coaches who uh, really trained me well, I, I thought, and uh, were with me the whole way through. It was a great, great experience. And being an Olympian is just uh, off the chart. You know, how many people do you know that have been Olympians or have, have had that, that pleasure in their life to do that? Well, these kids aren't Olympians yet, Pat, but we're about ready to get into the uh, first bout match of the day. 106 pounds, Ian Elsie of Aptos and Joe Castillo of Santa Cruz. Ian, you're going to see him in... The dark. Joe's going to be in the cardinal and kind of a silver or a white. If you're looking at it, you talk about these coaches. Reggie Roberts, the coach of Aptos High School, has done a fantastic bit with his program. So great coaches, good young athletes. We're ready to wrestle. Whistle, and off we go. Uh, Ian Elsie from Aptos was a champion uh, last year at 106 pounds. His current record is 22 and 12, and he's ranked 18th in CCS. Uh, this year his tournament placing was second at the Dawn to Dust tournament, fifth at the Peninsula, Peninsula tournament, third at the El Camino tournament, and uh, Ian has lifelong aspirations to become a coastal wedding planner. So you folks out there, that when, he gets out of, when he gets out of high school, in fact, he may be going now to get his license so he can be called Mary and Sam, along with little Abner. <laughs> Both of these wrestlers still trying to feel each other out. We had a little whistle. Ian takes a shot underneath, and Joe just plays out right on top of him. Yeah. Ian doing a nice job of getting out of that mix, takes another shot at it, but to no avail. Both of these kids are quick as a cat. Yeah, he's, he's worked a good, uh, tried to get the single from the outside, then he tried the high crotch, and there he goes with a beautiful duck under for a two-point takedown. That was an outstanding move right there. Ian on top, Joe trying to figure out how to get out underneath him, trying to get his legs underneath him. Ian, if he can lift him and try and throw him, we'll do it right now, but Joe's having none of it and they get it out of, out of bounds. We have two referees working the match right now, three all in total. Pat, who are they? We got a referee right now on the, on the mat, blowing the whistle is Mike Haar. Uh, Mark, he is probably, uh, has the most uh, state tournaments under his belt. He wrestled at Fremont High School in Sunnyvale uh, wrestled at Humboldt State and uh, just has had a great career in officiating. He's probably done 25 state high school championships. The judge on this mat is Keith Pickard. Uh, Keith uh, went to San Jose State where he was a judo guy and he's also a longtime state state uh, official. He's done many, many state tournaments. And our third official is Max Kalahoff. And, uh, Max originally came to us from New Jersey. He wrestled at Trenton State University. And uh, he uh, is a school teacher over in San Jose, and he has many state championships under his belt also. A great crew of guys. There we got a beautiful we turn. That power half, he just powered him over with that half Nelson. Elsie, Elsie really cranked that half on him. And Castillo's in real trouble right now. <coughs> He's got to hang on to it. Time has almost expired here for the first one. Towel is out. He's trying to get it in, and Joe is able to hang on yeah. by about the width of a uh, hair. Yeah. Mine, which he, I don't have any. Yeah, saved by the bell on that one. Uh, Castillo from Santa Cruz High School, 
coached by John Corona and Cody Kiff. He was third in, in the league last year. He, he is a senior, and his record this year is 12-6. and six. And good thing about him, he's planning on becoming an elementary school teacher after attending Cabrillo and transferring to UCSC. One of my guys. Going to be wrestling preschool kid, or elementary kids. That ought to be fun. Again, <laughs> just working each other. Ian going for a shot, not there. Good job by Joe. Now he goes, single leg, he's got it. Wraps himself around it, and Joe's finding himself in trouble trying to push Ian's head down. Pow powered his way right into position on that for the two-point takedown. Oh, there he goes, burying that half again. Oh, he's he got him. tough. Elsie is tough with that half, Nelson, I'll tell you. It looks like Ian's just a little bit too far over the chest, and Joe's able to keep that left shoulder up off the mat. Yeah, he, he's got to gotta get position on the head there cinch up on the head just a little bit and, and get your body back back center not too far so you don't want to get rolled through Joe trying to arch his way out of this thing and Ian trying to crank him right back on down I'd be snapped in half by now good job by Joe to roll out of that good escape but as you can see on the scoreboard Ian's on top right now as we are in the second period of wrestling between these two yeah, wonder, 10 to nothing. I wonder what happened to our scoreboard tonight. It disappeared. Yeah. <laughs> Ian on the back. Joe's able to step up. A little trip. Oh, nice, nice trip. Nice trip on that. Yeah, sitting up in the stands with everybody while all of this was going on. Yeah. When these wrestlers are taken gently to the mat, you can hear all the oohs and ahs from the crowd. It sounds like it hit hard. Yeah. Yeah, basically when you have an arm trap like that, you have no way to stop your fall, and you and you hit usually at your shoulder, and then you hit your hit the side of your head. So it, it makes a pretty good sound. Elsie trying to get Castillo to uh, acquiesce. Castillo manages to get out of bounds. Whistle will stop action and bring him back to the center. Yeah, this is a good first match, Pat. And these both of these wrestlers are coming at the 106 pound class. Yeah. You see that uh, Castillo is a taller of the two, a pretty rangy guy for a 106 pounder, and Elsie seems to be a little more powerful. You know, he's able to work that, control that underneath arm, work his power half. When he gets that half, he really cranks it. He's got Ian's him in trying to flip Castillo over again, and he does it. Castillo now trying to keep that right shoulder up while Elsie's trying to. Pin it down in there. If he can slip up over the top, maybe he's got it. Time is running out here in the second period. Castillo trying to hold on, and he does. But I'll tell you one thing, though. The score is definitely in Elsie's favor as he is on top of Castillo, 13 to nothing as we get ready to start the yeah. third period of wrestling. Yeah, and El Elsie's just two points away from a tech fall. If he scores 15 points or more, then his opponent will have a tech fall. Castillo will be on top. Let's see how quick... Elsie gets out of this. Here's an opportunity right now for Castillo to try and score a point or two because Elsie escapes. This thing's yeah. almost all, all but over yeah. with. Elsie's fighting, fighting those hands real well. He's got his hips out forward. And there's your one point escape. And it's 14 to nothing. Elsie sh shoots underneath. He gets hold of Castillo's right leg. Castillo trying to push his head down. What is that? What's he trying to do outside to get out of there? Trying, trying to force his body the other way. And there we have a score of 16 to nothing by uh, Ian Elsie from Aptos High School, who will be a 106-pound champion with a 16-0 score. Nice technical wrestling by Elsie. He did a real, very quick, did a nice job of doing a technically correct wrestler yeah Ian was very good on uh, all his shots were good um, you know his singles really working for him and that duck under worked really good for him so he was very very superior on his feet next one up is 113 from San Lorenzo Valley Jason Silva and from Aptos Isha Rodriguez Isha likes to go by the name of Bam Bam. All right. Not, I didn't know we were doing WCW. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, Isha is uh, one of our female wrestlers we have in the finals tonight. She is 16, undefeated, competed in the girls' CCS. I don't think she plays. 
And uh, she was an all-state cheerleader uh, who came out for wrestling senior year to challenge herself. What a great uh, thing for her to do. I think it's fantastic. You yeah. want to challenge your... You want to challenge yourself physically as well as mentally. Yeah. Wrestle. Yeah. It's, a, it's an absolutely great sport. Yeah. She is, she is a senior, and Jason Silva is a 10th grader, and uh, he was second in the league last year, and uh, he likes to take long walks on the beach. So good luck to him. Yeah, he's up in the Redwoods. That's going to be a long walk just to get to the beach. <laughs> Silva working, trying to get a shot. Issa doing a good job. Just really controlling Silva. Silva trying to get those hands through. Rodriguez with a shot, not there. Pat, to me, it's fun to watch the wrestlers spar, trying to figure out how they can take advantage of somebody else's weakness. Yeah, it's just like kind of like a boxing match. You know, they feel each other out, feel each other out, and see what's going to work for them. Hand control, head control. What what way they could go? Can they go left? Can they go right? Do I want to do a single? Do I, you know what I want to do? A duck under. You've got to have you got to have a lot of artillery, you know, in your in your bag of tricks. Silva trying to shoot for an ankle. He got really really low as you saw, not there. As Rodriguez doing a nice job of not giving Jason anything really to work with. Yeah, she's doing a, She's doing a good job really of holding her own here. Um, you know, not letting, not letting him get in for a shot. Just got called for stalling, got a warning for stalling uh, for not being aggressive enough up on her feet. Now Rodriguez trying to turn him. She's out in front, which is a good position to be in control. If she can turn her wrestler yeah. over, she's trying to do that to Silva. Silva's trying to arch up and turn. Oh, there he goes with the wing lock. That wing lock, if he could come around, it didn't work for him. Nice, nice defense there by Rodriguez. Very, Did a very nice job. There she goes. She goes. Yeah. Rodriguez scores two. Jason trying to get out of that one, and Rodriguez is having nothing of it. Time is starting to wind down in the first period, and there it goes. So it was one period in the books for these two with a 113. Yeah, Jason Silva. Silva, Silva kept trying to sit out, but. Uh, Rodriguez followed him the whole way. You know, she she has good balance and where she knows how to follow real well. The flip was up. They decide to go to the neutral, so both wrestlers will be in the up position. Jason with a shot, misses it. Great shot by Rodriguez, jumps right on his back. Here she goes around again. Another two-point takedown for Rodriguez. He's looking good right now. If she just well, wrestles intelligently, she could end up yeah. beating Silva. Yeah, Silva tried to get the roll. He tried to hook the elbow and roll her, and he got her going part way, but she was able to regain her balance and maintain control. Rodriguez just riding Silva. Again, Rodriguez from Aptos High School, Silva from San Lorenzo Valley. Rodriguez now out in front and really forcing Silva's head yeah. down to the mat. Good control position. Yeah, she still she still has control here until he shows superior. There he's trying that wing wing lock again, but not working for him. Reggie Roberts, the coach of Aptos, says get out of there. Silva was able to get out of that one, so he's got a reversal, two point on the reversal. And a nice move by Jason. Yeah, just pushed over and, and uh, Rodriguez lost her balance there, and he forced her over onto her side, but he was able to come around behind her. Now he's got that, that arm up behind her back and turned her over on the back there with that move. Rodriguez finding herself in trouble, and Jason trying to get his weight up over her chest and does it with a pin. And Jason Silver from SLV is our 113-pound SCCAL champion for 2000. And 14. That was a good wrestling match. You can see a lot of strategy going on as both wrestlers were working really hard to physically feel what where the other one was and what they could and could not do. And that was a great match, folks, between Isha Rodriguez of Aptos and Jason Silva of San Lorenzo Valley, the winner, Silva. He'll move on now next week going to the CCS. We are in our 120-pound weight class. Ramon Zacharias and Damino Parrish, another woman from Scotts Valley.
I think uh, Domino is going to forfeit here in the finals. Um, she'll be going to the state championship next, next week and uh, going to state championships. And so I think they, they don't want to take a chance of her possibly getting, getting injured. So this match will be a forfeit tonight. If those who were here earlier got a chance to watch Domino wrestle, she is quick. Yeah, she is, she is very, very well skilled. She should do very well, very well in the state tournament. And the next one up is gonna be another Zacharias from Aptos, Geo. And Geo is going to be wrestling Jed Kraft from San Lorenzo Valley, and there's a wrestling family for you. Yeah, this is going. This is going to be. Uh, this is going to be, I think, a real good match at 126 pounds. You've got the sophomore uh, Jed Kraft against um, another sophomore, Geo Zacharias from Aptos. <clears throat> Both of these guys have a good record. They placed high in tournaments throughout the season, and. Uh, I think we're going to see some real action in this match. I think so. Watching them both wrestle in the preliminaries are good technical wrestlers. Yeah. Ken Pellestrini, the head coach for San Lorenzo Valley, does a good job of preparing his wrestlers. And, and Reggie Roberts, the head coach, and one of about 15 coaches that Aptos yeah. has, does a great job too. You know, Jed Kraft, along with uh, Gio Zacharias, they both come from wrestling families. they got brothers that wrestled. So, you know, they came up the right way, you know, wrestling with – with brothers and brothers. Real quick, the action's gonna be fast as both of these are going for the head, trying to get control. Kraft does the first shoot and is able to get Gio's leg up in the air for a little bit. Kraft, Kraft had a nice shot in on that, followed through with a kind of a body lock and was able to power Zacharias down. Gio he just powered him. Gio Zach trying to get a ground, doesn't do it. Kraft's got him in a predicament. Zacharias, near fall. Zacharias has him in near fall position right now. He's got, getting his three points near fall here. Now we're gonna get on it. He is cranking on Zacharias' neck. And finally both wrestlers get out of bounds. Yeah, he got over a little bit too far and Zacharias was able to, to spin up out of there. Now, when you get two wrestlers like this, you want to end this quick. You want to go all three, you're going to be pooped. Yeah, either, either way. <laughs> yeah. Kraft trying to maintain control of the wrist. Right now, both wrestlers. Kraft actually looks like he's got a little bit of a leg lock on Zacharias. Zacharias is trying to work that, that side roll on him by pulling the arm down. And, and so he can spin out one way or the other. So, but you see how, how Kraft, great shot here of Kraft controlling his hand, controlling his waist and controlling his hand. Oh, Zach nice power move by Kraft. Kraft trying to get up yeah. over the top of him and then tweaking back over. He, he, Near fall position again. Balances Kraft. back. He gets his balance back. We could have a fall here. Kraft looking very strong here. There again, he's got to cover Zacharias's other arm so he can't roll out of that move. Zacharias gets on his stomach, but Kraft's not going to let up at all. Six nothing in favor of Kraft as time is starting to wind down here in the first period. Kraft's up eight to nothing. We've got a situation here. Boy, that was close. That was close to it. To it, uh, losing a two point near fall. But I mean a reversal on that, but it didn't happen. Didn't quite get get breakaway free, you know. K Coach Ken Paul Sweeney asking for an explanation, and our uh, referee Mike Har gave it to him. And of course, like all coaches, they accepted perfectly. Yeah. Yeah. No question at all. Yeah. Both wrestlers. Here we go. Second period, eight nothing in favor of Jed Kraft. Geo really yanking Kraft's head, trying to get Kraft off balance. And of course, Kraft returns the favor. Yeah. Kraft going for a high crotch there. Trying to follow, I think he's trying to follow up with kind of a tip tip move here. Controlling Zacharias' elbow, he, he could tip him. 
Zacharias has got hold of Kraft's legs and trying to get around in front, and he's managed to do that. Now the question is, Pat, do you let go of that ankle? Yeah, Kraft, you see, the, neither one of them could improve their position right there. The referee, Mike Carr, stopped the match, and uh, they will go into a stalemate position, put them back up on their feet. Crafts. Oh, nice shot by Zacharias. He had that leg up. Oh. Kraft went under real nice, but he went a little too far. Zacharias does a nice job of getting back on top, picking up two points. Kraft playing He's out. Cradle. He's got the cradle on Kraft, cradle position, but he wasn't able to get enough position to turn him. When you get that loopy cradle like that around the top, you got to really get out to the side and crank that, crank that thing to turn him over. Zacharias really trying to force Kraft's head to the mat. Kraft doing a nice job of staying tight. Now he's in a little ball position. Zacharias is trying to turn him. He could be in trouble here. Kraft could get that leg up and cross his body. Kraft's are not letting go of Zacharias' leg. Yeah. He knows that that's his safety net right now. And, and you're right, I Zacharias can see. Zacharias has got that vine, vine in on this side. He's trying to get position, but he, can't now he's now he's got double got the double double vine now Kraft takes a peek sees that the towel man's coming out to announce the time eight to two is in favor of Kraft and Kraft just got a, a warning for stalling out of bounds that was an exciting second period of wrestling Pat yeah <laughs> they uh, they're really active these two guys you know these are 126 pounders, folks. If you want to wrestle with them, be my guest. <laughs> nice shot by Kraft. Kraft's got Kraft hold of it. He's got his head buried down there. That's a tough position. If you can't move your head one way or the other, and there goes Zacharias. Take, take Zac down. Zacharias just lets him up. Nine to four in favor of Kraft. Zacharias is trying to yank Kraft's head almost yeah, he's off. Trying to use, trying to use that head snap, head snap, but Kraft yeah. using a good leg drive, Pat. Yeah, yeah, Kraft, Kraft, Kraft really powered out of that. Uh, he was in trouble off balance, and he still was able to come through and take uh, take Zacharias down. Now he's putting him on his back here again. 11, 11, four in favor of Kraft from San Lorenzo Valley. Zacharias trying to figure out how to get out of a, a nice hold Kraft has him in. Yeah, Kraft, Kraft's gonna have another two points here. I think the scorekeeper put it up a little early. Kraft trying to kick over the top of Zacharias no, to get good. on his not, back. Not good, get your arm out of there. Can Zacharias work his way around? Come around with that switch. That was a real nice move by, by Zacharias. Zacharias lets him up. Geo needs a pin. It's yeah. it's a pin to win or forget it. Yeah. Yeah. The score is 14 to 6 now in favor of Kraft. Kraft will just stay away from him if he's smart. He's stalling, backing out. One point. There was a point for point for Zacharias. Now, do you throw Kraft. caution to the wind, Pat, when you need a pin? Do you just go for it? Well, you know, that, that's in everybody's M.O., but trying to do it is another thing. Referees out there, both wrestlers in a neutral position. Zachariah's got a good ankle grip. Another two points for Zacharias, and there's the whistle, and that's going to be the end of the third round. Great three rounds of wrestling, Pat. Yeah. 14 to nine in favor of Kraft, so he comes away the winner. Very good. That's what you come to a wrestling match for, to see that type of wrestling. Uh -huh. A lot of action, good holds, a lot of tough predicaments for both of those wrestlers. Yeah, that really, you saw the flexibility in the moves that they did. There was tremendous amount of flexibility. One guy, then the other guy, you know, avoiding getting put on your back, and so that was uh, that was some good stuff. We're coming up next, 132 pounds here. Jesse Castillo out of 
Harbor High School and Miguel Barranco out of Aptos High School. 132 pounds of meat. This is this is a tough match here because you got a you have a senior, Miguel Branco from Aptos wrestling a freshman, uh, Castillo from from Harbor. Castillo had a weird stance to start yeah. this thing, and Barranco's got him in a jam real quick. It was a nice nice double, nice follow on the control here. Uh, Branco is 26 and nine. He's ranked ninth in CCS. There he goes, he's working his tilt, pulling that arm across, working his tilt, and he's got, oh, he's got him. How can got, you stand on your head? My neck got, would be gone by now. Got him up on his head there for, for the near fall points. Barranco really working, getting control, trying to get the leg. Nice job by Castillo to get out of it. Not quite out of it per se, but yeah, Castillo, Castillo for a freshman has a, has a great record. He's 21 and 12. Uh, so he's been in a lot of matches, you know, and uh, he was third at the at the uh, Harbor Frost Soft Tournament way back in December. He has improved tremendously from that point. Castillo gets a point for escaping. Barranco right back at him, takes a shot, doesn't get it. Castillo says, I'll try it. No, I love Barranco's technique. Down, push down on the head, get right on his back. Yeah, he does that quick, that quick spin around. Controls the head and the chin, and then does that quick, quick spin around for control. Now he's got a cradle, cradle on, cradle on Castillo. He's got to rock him up here. Now it looks like Castillo's is curling up in the fetal position, which would, to me would make him easier to do what uh, Barranco wants, was to get in that cradle. Yeah, if you can't, if you can't break the hands in that cradle position, that's usually what you do. You'll go into the ball or into the fetal position. So it doesn't give him any leverage. The more you stretch out, the more leverage he has on you. Castillo trying. Now he's got that thing, he got that thing tight. Barranco really cranking on Castillo's head, but Castillo fighting his way out of it. You saw his helmet strap across his mouth, uh, across Castillo's mouth. That's gotta be a tough one, you know? Hard to breathe with, through your nose only when you're wrestling. That would hurt. Castillo warned there for an illegal position. Just a warning, no, no part. Nice sit, nice sit out by Castillo. Real quick sit out. Broncos looking, for, oh there, hits a single, he's transferred into a double. Nice takedown, puts him right on his back. Has him in that cradle again. And oh, Castillo's in real big trouble. And there's the fall. So the 132 pound champion, Miguel Barranco, out of Aptos High, pins Jesse Castillo. And that was a lot of action also. Folks, I'd like to thank some of our sponsors that we have here, Aptos High Athletics, teaching youth important lessons on and off the mat. Look them up at www.aptoshs.net and hit athletics. Also, cut weight, not nutrition. That's www.lifeshots.com. And Craft Body Shop, quality work and local services. You can find them on the web at www.craftbodyshop.com. Some of our great sponsors that we have here as we get ready to go to the 138. Adam Dorney and Nick Reyes. This is two real good looking sophomores going at it here. Nick Reyes from Scotts Valley and Adam Dorney from Aptos. Uh, Dorney, is in, Dorney is, has a red anklet on and uh, Reyes has the green anklet. Nice double leg takedown and step through by Reyes. Re, Reyes is, uh, was second in the league last year. He is uh, 23, and, 23 and 13. Uh, this season, and Adam Dorney is 14 and six, and uh, well, I'll tell you, Reyes is in command right now. He's got Dorney right where he wants him. Although Dorney's showing me a lot of powers, he's powering his way up. Yeah. Oh, wheelbarrow! I remember this from our from uh, picnic days. Yeah. Yeah, we 
We used to do exercises like that. Nice, nice crab ride, nice crab ride there by Reyes. He's really using his leg, legs well to stop, stop any moves Dorney's trying to make. Reyes now trying to force Dorney's head right to the mat, keep his Dorney's legs spread apart. Dorney can really not do anything from that position. Yeah, you can't stay in that position for too long, and the official will hit you for stalling when you're doing the double, you're doing that double uh, crab ride like that, where you're locking in both legs because the, the bottom end is pretty helpless when you, you put that pressure on him. Yeah. Again, Reyes, who's out of Scott's Valley, just working the top, working the head, trying to get hold of the wrist, and I, I gotta give Dorney credit, he's not really giving Reyes much of a shot at controlling anything. Yeah, he's trying, it looks like he's trying to work his power half uh, from the position we're in, it's hard to tell because we're looking at their behind, not their front end, so. Uh, looked like he was trying to work that power half on him, but he couldn't quite quite get it through. Good first period now done. Two nothing is all the points have gone with all that wrestling in it, and that's Nick Reyes out of Scotts Valley. So both again from the up position. Here we go. Here we go. Second period, two to nothing in favor of Nick Reyes from Scotts Valley. I've noticed Dorn, he really doesn't, you know, he kind of shows that left arm. It's kind of like a boxer with a jab, and then yeah. finally brings the right one into play. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Dorney does nice, a nice. Nice duck, nice duck under on that. He had to take him to the mat to score the point, so he got into that rear standing position, but he had to take him to the mat before the, the points were thrown up. Dorney gets a couple points. Reyes says, I want one more back from escaping. He does it. Yeah, nice stand up and sit out. Nice, beautiful double leg. That was the classic double leg there by Nick Reyes. That was a beautiful shot. Right behind both knees, tucked him in, and took uh, Dorney right to the mat. Reyes right in front of us. You can see that forearm right over the back of Dorney's. Uh, yeah. I'm going to say he might be blonde, but I think half the Aptos <laughs> wrestlers decided to go with a ginger color today. Yeah, I think a little uh, bleach, huh? Yep. Just a little bit. We should probably should drug test him for too much bleach. <laughs> He'd probably fail on yeah. that one. Back these two, at it. These two guys are really evenly matched. Two great looking sophomores, you know. Well, I'll tell you, with two great looking sophomores, the two powerhouse programs in the SCCAL, which is Scotts Valley and Aptos, are going to have some fun wrestlers over the next two years watching these two. Yeah, in the dual meet season, you know, Aptos won the dual meet season. They were undefeated, you know, throughout the whole season. And their best match was against Scotts Valley. It was a real, uh, real exciting match to watch. Now he's tr trying to work, uh, Reyes is trying to work that power half, but he's doing a little bit more riding than really trying. You can't really do much when you stay parallel with your opponent. You have to get out to the side or get out in the front. You know, you have to get perpendicular to him. You can't, you can't sit in that uh, parallel position. You'll get called for stalling one thing. See, and he goes back to the same ride all the time. That's a, that's a definite stall situation. He's, he's kind of like a one note pony, if you will, out it, there, it, one yeah. note piano. Now he finally spins around trying to yeah. get out in front. Yeah, now he's, now he's doing it. That's what he has to do. He has to get out there and crank that thing. Now he's trying to take any, oh, he's, Reyes was just getting ready to take that arm bar up behind, behind Dorney's back, but uh, time ran out. Five to two in favor of Nick Reyes of Scotts Valley. We are in the 130, no, excuse me, 100, and, yeah, 138 pounders. Dorney takes a new, neutral position and gives Reyes a one point escape point. So well, that's good thinking. Yeah, so we're at six, and, six to two in favor of Reyes. So Dorney hopes to get a takedown here and get back in the match here. Down by four, that's, a, that's quite a few points. He's trying to work in that head, but he's really not getting much of an opportunity. Uh, Reyes doing a good job of controlling the wrist for a little while. Yeah, trying to whip him over. He had that over-under on him and was trying to take him over, but didn't quite. There, a nice high crotch shot. Nice high crotch. Oh, and he followed through. Oh, and right with a half. Right with a half, right, taking Dorney right to his back. That's a nice skill right there to go hit that double 
and then go, as the man's going down, be in position to put that half on and be right in that position. And we're right back to this, staying right behind him and controlling the wrestler. Eight to two is the score. Reyes of Scotts Valley in command. Very, very much so. He's working it, and here comes Dorney. Dorney knows he has to get a pin here because he knows time is short. And here's a single wheelbarrow. Yeah, trying to hang on that single leg and couldn't quite do it. Reyes is doing a great, great job of riding. You know, of following his man around where he needs to be. And whistle and a blow is bring everybody back to the center. Great job by these officials to realize when the action is stalled and to get every back to the uh, the neutral part or the center and go again. Yeah, yeah, that that helps a lot. You know, the ref the referee knows that at that point in time you're not out there to stall. You're out there to wrestle. The hustle is hustle is the word. You know that's. I, you know, you see so many matches where it's back away, back away. But these guys are going after each other very, very well. Working hard. Reyes has done a nice job, Pat, of at least having hold of a wrist almost the entire time. Yeah. He's trying to work that two on one. And I think that Dorney, Dorney now is in a position where he knows that he's going to have a hard time getting out of there. And that's the end of the match and we have. Nick Reyes from Scotts Valley winning over Adam Dorney of Aptos, 8-2. to two. Before we get into our 145, I'd like to thank KP Construction. Construction you can always count on. You look them up on the web at www.kp-construction.com. And, of course, I'm Kurt Edwards with... The Commissioner Pat Lovell here at Harbor High School for the 2013-2014 SCCAL Wrestling Champions. And you are watching on Community TV. We're thrilled that Community TV is here again as they always are for I don't even remember how many years. All righty, here we go. Matt Holman and Dan Velez, 145. Dan, Holman from Soquel. Dan Velez is a sophomore, uh, coached by Reggie Roberts at Aptos High School. He was third in the tournament last year, 12 and nine on the seasons, ranked number 20 in CCS. And uh, he wants to be an avid audio, uh, an audio uh, auto repairman and demolition derby driver. Boy, that's my kind of guy. <laughs> I like yeah. this guy already. Yeah. Demolition Derby, NASCAR, <laughs> auto repair, all works for me. Yeah. Uh, Just watching these two. Everyone's, nobody's been able to take the other one down, but they're sure working the body, working control on the wrist and the head. Yeah. Both Matt, equally matched. This is the first Soquel rusher we've seen tonight. Matt Homan, uh, Shane Torres, and Pete Cardilla are doing a great great job in bringing the, bringing the Soquel program back to life. Been down for a couple years, and they're doing a great job. Matt Homan is a is a is a junior. Um, he's five and four in the season, and uh, he was fourth at the Apple Cider Tournament, and uh, he, he plans on going to college. That's a that's a good thing for a young man like that. Nice power move by Homan as he just takes Velez right up over the top. Velez wrestled earlier and defeated San Lorenzo Valley uh, to get to this point. The wrestler he beat was Zef Frazier. Battle again inside. The officials got the we hands. We got a clenched. technical violation here of clasping hands by the top man. When he's in control down the mat, you cannot lock your hands. That's a one point penalty. Can you bulldog? Can you get a rope and hog tie him? No, you can't do it then either. So. No, this yeah. takes out my best move. We have a bleeding time now. Uh, Matt Holman is. Had a little blood, I guess, out of his nose, and so they're going to stop that bleeding and spray him with some Clorox to make sure we kill all the German germs <laughs> out there and whatever. For all this wrestling around here, wrestling is a very clean sport. Yeah, yeah, it is. You know, it's an individual sport, but you know, you got so much support from your teammates, and you know, when you're on a team of 14, how many teams have 14 guys? You know, you look at football, they had 11. You know, you look at volleyball, they got six. 
you look at soccer, who knows? I don't know how many they have. But oh, anyway, more than one. But anyway, here you have you have 13 brothers rooting for you. You know, so it, it becomes a you know an individual team sport in the sense of the word. You know, yeah. very much like a little bit like track and field and, and swimming. Yeah, yeah. Where you've got a lot of cheering going on. So, Holman, Matt Holman, coming back out on the floor. They hopefully have stopped the bleeding. He squares off with Dan Velez. Velez is down by one. It's two to one in favor of the SoCal wrestler, Matt Holman. Velez goes right after him. Both tie up. Velez is a powerful looking little guy, you know? He's got the, oh, and we got another bleeding, bleeding time here. You're making an adjustment on the clock, the clock nope. here. Okay. I think. So they're adding 16 more seconds before Holman trying to get control of Velez. It does slam him to the mat. Look out, yeah. folks. There's a basketball court over there. Yeah, Holman's doing a good job of controlling him. And Velez is ready to rock and roll. He's going to come up out of there quick. Nice job by Holman trying yeah. to control that leg so Velez doesn't able to get a chance to get out of there. Yeah, up. Oh, Holman locked his hands again. Now it'll be another penalty point, one point. If he does it again, it's a two pointer. So he's got to watch that lock in his hand. 2 2. We're going into the second round of wrestling. Tie score 2 to 2. Starting up on their feet, second round. Velez, oh. he, I like Velez. I mean, he's a powerful package, yeah. short, but very powerful for the upper body and legs. Yeah, we're going to see somebody get thrown here, I think. Nice snap, nice snap down. I'm waiting there for, he goes. Pat, I'm waiting for Holman. He's got a little bit more length than Velez to take advantage of that length. Yeah, yeah, he does. Oh, Velez, Velez has really had a nice shot on that. Just powered him down to the mat off that double leg takedown. Velez on top, four to two, we're in the second round. The 145 pound weight class in the 2014 SCCAL Wrestling Championships. We got Velez uh, controlling him on top, taking that two on one wrist ride. He'll try and turn him there, try and pull him over and get a cheap tilt off of this. I'm watching he Velez. But Watch Velez, Pat. He's trying to get himself off to the side, like you were saying before, to get some kind of an angle to turn him. Yeah, he's, that's why he's trying to trap that arm. He's trapping that arm. He's looking for the half there. Now he's going to probably go to a power, go to a power half here. He really wasn't able to do it. I think he hasn't worn Holman down enough to do that. You do that in the latter round. Holman with a nice try there in the sit out, but Velez was able to hold him. Now he's working the armbar. He's got the armbar position. Needs to pull his elbow back, do it toward his body. A little bit too far over. Holman doing a good job with his legs, trying to prevent that roll from taking place, and now he's trying to power himself up. Oh, there he goes. There he goes. He's got, well, he's got, got Holman, Holman on his back here. Can he get over the top on that chest? Yeah, he's got it tight. So in the second round, Velez was up four to two. He is able to pin Matt Holman in that second round. So Velez, our champion in the 145 pound weight class. He really came to life on that, didn't he? He did. That, yeah. you know, the first, first period, you know, looked like he was just yeah. sort of feeling Holman out in that second period. He Holman either hit him across the <laughs> mouth or something because he, Velez came to life very, yeah. very quickly. He really did. He really, really showed a lot of, a lot of initiative there. Coming up on the 152 pounders, Aaron DeCarlo and Jacob Blair, getting out in front of us. Jacob Blair from Aptos High School with a red anklet on against Aaron Del Carlo of Soquel with a green anklet on. 
There's a nice double leg takedown by Jacob Blair. Jacob is a senior at Aptosh, and Aaron Del Carlo from SoCal is a junior. Jacob Blair coached by Reggie Roberts and his staff, and Del Carlo coached by Shane Torres and Pete Cardelia. Uh, Jacob Blair is 20 and 15 on the season, ranked 18th in the CCS. Um, Blair he, controlling the action right now, just riding to Carlo and is looking for something he can get hold of so he can get off to the side and possibly turn him. Yeah, he's controlling. Uh, Del Carlo did a nice job, but uh, tried to maneuver his way off the bottom there, and Blair was able to just follow him right around. Now he's breaking him down. He's, he got some long levers there. He's, Aren't those legs go from here to next week? He's, yeah. he's using them really well. Yeah, he's got, he's got the long body, doesn't he? Gets in behind to Carlo, gets that leg up behind him, and just drives to Carlo right down to the mat. You go to that tight waist ride, ankle tight waist ride, break him down, look for something to turn him with. There again, you see that hand completely around his waist. So you would look at look at look at him come across. Yep. How many guys can reach across another guy's body like that? Not that much, but he's starting yeah. to get the turn, Pat. Yeah, he's, he's to pull that arm across. He's in a, a cross face position here, but he lost the arm again. You would think if you're underneath, you'd have an opportunity to rest, but you're working twice as hard as the guy that's <laughs> having fun on top. Yeah, you're pushing your weight and his weight both. So that's that's a tough road to hoe. Running low on time here go. in the first period of play. And Blair really doing a nice job. Time runs out. He did a nice job taking him over with that half, but we had time ran out, and uh, I don't know. But DiCarlo getting up awfully slow. Yeah, Del Carlo looks like he might have hurt his shoulder or something. Whistle. He Blair is up by two. Yeah. He quickly goes for the leg. Blair. Pat, I think this is going to be a quick time. Yeah, I, th I think uh, I think uh, Del Carlo is hurt, but he doesn't want to. I don't think he wants to show it. Looks like he he was hanging that right arm down. He may have hurt his shoulder. Warned for stalling now. Um, hopefully he's not has not injured that shoulder. DiCarlo trying to get a wrist, trying to get something that he can get out of Blair's grasp, and Blair being very, very tenacious. Yeah, he was just a little short on his sit-out. Looked like he was going to come out of there, but uh, Blair was able to follow him and uh, get back into control, maintain control. Blair again, not trying to get him to roll over. Use that leg drive, but you just can't really get an ankle yeah. or a leg to pull. Yeah, he's got that, he's got that deep half now. He keeps, keeps cranking that. He's, he's working him good on top. I mean, he's doing a lot of doing a lot of work on top. Blair looks like he almost gets that position, but DiCarlo has been coached very well yeah. to try and neutralize the problem that he's in. Yeah. Yeah, Blair's still trying to work that inside wrist ride. You see his, where he's at here. Trying to tip over, doing the near side leg lift. Step through on that if he can. Now he's got the arm bar. Now he's in good position. Now he's in good position. He's got the uh, forearm trapped. Forearm trapped, he's got that deep arm bar. And he's gonna crank that that baby here. And he's just mopping the mat with- Yeah, he just, <laughs> yeah, he just can't quite, just can't quite get him to flop over, you know? Time almost running out here in the second period of wrestling between Aaron DiCarlo of SoCal and Jacob Blair of Aptos, 152-pound weight class. And Aaron's hurting, folks. The, the score is only four to nothing in favor of Blair, but I'm, I'm looking out at that mat, Pat, and, and you've seen it more times than not, and I've seen it in a few athletics. DiCarlo's hurting. Yeah, Del Carlo, you, you know, it looked like he was hurt on that when they started the second round. Um, I don't know why they're not calling the, calling the trainer in. It looks like He's, he hurt it. It looked like he had hurt his shoulder, but I don't know. He's, he's one tough son of a gun. Yeah. 
<laughs> you can see the trainer. He looks like he's ready for to do the hundred yard dash, ready to be called in. But yeah. so far, and I'm wa watching that right arm, and it's very ginger. I don't know if it's shoulder or elbow. Now, Del Carlo is taking the bottom position. I really don't think that's the right position because he's been on the bottom the whole match. I think I'd want to get up on my feet or uh, be in control on top rather than take the beating that I've been taking the whole match. And he's in taking it and we've got a whistle. Yeah. Had an illegal, illegal full Nelson, I think, on that. That gets a point for Del Carlo. Yeah, Blair, Blair put a, Bear put a full Nelson on him there. Now what they've done is uh, Blair, Blair's let him have the standing position, scored a one, gave him a one point escape. Nice double shot, he's in deep, he's in control. Del Carlo banged his head on the floor there a little bit. He's staying and, tucked up to try and, and alleviate any. Yeah, he's trying to work that ball and chain up between his legs here. To take him over. If he grab that shoulder, he's going to put him in, put him in trouble. You grab, grab for the shoulder. If he starts to go for the shoulder, you still have the half. You can bury the half on that side. Now Work. he's going into the tilt position. Right. Now in Aaron DiCarlo's defense, he's in he's behind in the mat, but he matches, but he is one strong wrestler. He has fought himself out of several predicaments. Yeah. Yeah, different different positions he's been able to get. There again, he's still trying that sit out. He got his arm trapped though. We're in the <laughs> third round. There Gets he goes. That one, six to he finally got it. Finally got got the sit out. Six to three is a score for Blair of Aptos. Inside 15 seconds. Just a nice, nice double leg tackle there by Blair. Uh, Del Carlo just could not defense that whatsoever. Just I'm came Blair, right I'm just going to hang on because I know that the, the towel man's out there for me. Yeah. <laughs> and our winner, Jacob Blair of Aptos, by a score. Of Eight to three. Coming up next is our 160 pound weight class, Andy Ramirez from Scotts Valley. And, and Pat, one of my favorites, I think he's a six year senior though here at Harbor High School. He seems like he's been around forever. Brian yeah. Batista. Yeah, he said this was the best five years of his life in <laughs> high school. So I'm not sure, not too sure about that. We're gonna do an eligibility check before the before the CCS. You do every other check on these four <laughs> athletes. Yeah. Leave it up, leave it up to me to do the dirty work. <laughs> go get them, Kamish. 160 pounders. Here we go. Yeah. Ramirez, Scotts Valley, Batista, Harbor. Batista in the green. Yeah, Brian Batista is one of the real class guys here of our league. You notice how he did that step over, hooked the leg that could to, you know, control the takedown after he got the takedown, how he stepped over. He's very, very flexible, and he's got a lot of a lot of ammunition in his arsenal, I'll tell you that. He, he's trying to do a cradle using his knee to block the head with. Now he, he had an over and under there. Uh, Brian Batisto is a senior. He's ranked first in the section. He has a 30-8 and eight record. So he's, he's won uh, numerous tournaments this season, and... Uh, He's our hope to get into the state finals this year. Andy, Andy Ramirez from Scotts Valley. Andy is a junior. His, he was third at the Peninsula and first at the Albany tournament. And he's, uh, Batista again, got it with a nice quick shot. And now he's just gonna have to ride him. Flexibility is huge in this sport, but strength has to be added to that, doesn't it? Yeah, but Batisto is so flexible. You'll see him do a lot of things that other wrestlers can't do because of his flexibility. He's got a good, there he goes with a cheap tilt. He's got that tight waist in the tilt position. Scores his two point near, two point near fall. Now he's good. Inside 30 seconds to go in the first round, and Batista comfortably on top, four to one. Yeah. There, he, there he gets his two-point near fall. He's yeah. up six to one. 
He's taking, taking that arm across the chest. He's trying to get him to go, and Rivera is doing working, a nice job of yeah, working for the arm bar. You notice how he vine, vines the near leg, and then he takes that two on one, that wrist ride, two on one wrist ride. And we have the end of the first period with Brian Batisto wearing the green anklet and the green uniform, winning six to one over Andy Ramirez from Scotts Valley. Batista takes the down position, I'm surprised. Yeah. Well, he's been in so much so dominant in the match so far, he figures he could probably get out of there. See how flexible he is? He could turn an inside turn there, hook in the leg and turn right up into his opponent. That takes some pretty good flexibility. There's a reversal, so he picked up two, Pat, by starting on the yeah. bottom. Yeah. I used to be flexible like that when I was a baby. <laughs> I never was. <laughs> yeah, Brian is really in control here, winning 8-1. to one. He's got that deep half, and I think we're going to have a fall here. Rolling over, getting him on a fall. Batista may be a little bit too far over the top, so he's not yeah. getting this weight right over that chest. He's going to cinch it up here. Look at, look at. Boy, here he's it got comes. Him, he's got him tight. Ramirez, and there's, there's your the fall. fall. And our repeat champion from 2013, Brian Batisto, 2014 champion from Harbor High School. Real quick, I'd like to thank another, some of our sponsors as we get ready to go for the 170 pound weight class. You can see in wrestling, folks, we don't slow down. And that Sid Smokehouse, Smokehouse, I can get it right. Barbecue, pizza, burgers, everything that you want in your basic diet, they've got it. Something for the whole entire family. On the web at www.sidssmokehouse.com. Craft Body Shop, quality work with local service at www.craftsbodyshop.com. Com. Now we get back into the action. Doug Pizer from from Scotts Valley is out there. Doug Pizer going against Gary. Yep. Yeah, Doug Pizer from Scotts Valley. Yep. Yeah, Doug is a is a junior, and uh, and 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 Mitch Gearing from Aptosh. Is, all, is also a junior. So we have two juniors here. And there we have uh, Mitch, we have Doug Pizer call, scoring a takedown there. Pizer again in control. Gehring steps out of it and is really pushing down on Pizer's head. Pizer's not letting go. Yeah. Pizer looks like he's enjoying this, like it's a rodeo. <laughs> yeah. Pizer is really a, a lanky young man, you know. He's got a lot of leverage here. The one point escape there by Gearing. Pizer wins, is leading two to one in the first period. Uh, Mitch Gearing from Aptos was a league champion last year. He's 19 and five record this year. Uh, placed in a lot of tournaments this season. Plays, plays the violin for Frankenstein movies. And uh, Doug Pizer is a, is a 23 and nine record. So these guys are pretty, pretty close to each other in ability. Pizer is still in control, gets right on top of Gehring. Rides him comfortably. Mitch trying to push his way right back up on top. He's trying to, trying to break, gearing, break gearing down. He's got that inside wrist ride again. Trying to get it, if you'll pull him to his side, he'll probably try and get a cheap tilt out of it. There's the end of the first round. We're getting ready for round two. Four to one. Pizer comfortably in control right now. If you can be in control when you're in a wrestling match and then he can turn on a dime. Yeah. Okay, here we go, second period, they're up on their feet. Mitch Gearing from Aptosh with the red anklet and Doug Pizer from Scotts Valley with the green anklet. Kind of hard to figure these guys out when they both have yeah. black singlets, but yeah. Gearing's got the white ear piece, or head piece. Pizer's in, on that, Pizer's in on that deep single. 
but he can improve. The official call a stalemate. No action there, nothing happening, so. He looked at he both did. of those wrestlers and they had each other's legs and they were just bearing yeah. down. No one was going anywhere. Gehring just pushes Pizer right off the mat. Back at it, still four to one in favor of Pizer of Scotts Valley. Nice shot there by Pizer, was just a little bit too far back. Went to his stomach and let Gehring come around for the two point takedown. Gehring got that ankle, he's gonna ride that. Pizer, probably a little bit more lanky than Mitch, would you say? Yeah, a little bit, yeah. I, I think, oh, nice switch. Nice switch move there by, by Gehring. Still hasn't coming got up, it all the way, but he's coming there. over the top. There he goes, nice move. Six to three in favor of Pizer. Still working on that two on one wrist ride. Looking for a tilt. Or he's gonna move to a cradle position or he'll probably take a cheap tilt. But he's gotta do something with that. You just can't hold that wrist forever. to be called for stalling. It looks like you're right, Pat. He's gonna go for that cradle, but he just can't quite get a good oh, rack. There he goes, there he goes, the arm bar. You gotta keep that arm down at, down at a 90 degree angle. Trying to get him to roll deep. over. Yeah, he's got it deep. Settle back with your chest. You got to set, get out the side more. There you go. Using his legs to drive. Yeah. Gearing in trouble. Mitch almost Ooh. fighting his way out of it. Nice on the balance. He needs to lift the head, lift the head, lift the head. That's what he needs to do to get his, get his shoulders down. Almost time, we're inside 10, five seconds and done. Six to three. What a way to end the second period of wrestling. Now it's gonna jump it up to nine to three in favor of Pizer. But Pizer had that, that he almost had him with a pin. Yeah, he almost had him. Man. Just, you know, that, like you said, the, that position, that perpendicular position is really important. You get that chest right where, right where it belongs, where you, you stop his momentum. Looks like Pizer lost his footing there for a second, and Gehring says, I'm going to take advantage of it. No points are changed yet. Yeah, he's still in on that single, single leg. I think we'll probably up, out of bounds. No points scored there. Back on their feet here. In the third round, 10 to three in favor of, Pizer's a bulldog. Yeah. And I know his mascot's the Falcon, but this guy's a bulldog. He, yeah, he, he gets hold of you and does not let go. Yeah, he really is. Oh, there was a shot. That was a good, good shot by, by Pizer, but he missed, missed completely and that gave Gearing, Gearing the ability to spin around and score two point takedown and then uh, Gearing let him go for the one point escape. 11 to five. Pfizer with a shot. Gehring does a nice job of kicking away from it. Now from right this point, can, can Gehring do anything? Well, it's pretty, pretty tough, guys. He's trying to do that cow catcher on him. He couldn't quite get it under both arms. So, uh, yeah, that neutral, you know, face head-to-head -head position is it's kind of tough to do something on. If you don't grab the arm tight or you know, do a tip move or something like that. Uh, it, you're pretty limited to what you can do there. Well, we got a break in the action for uh, Please Don't Bleed on this Matt segment. One of our sponsors I'd like to thank is Aptos High, excuse me, Aptos High Athletics, teaching your youth important lessons on and off the mat. Reach them at www.aptoshigh.net backslash athletics. Craft body shop, quality work with local service Find them on the web at craftsbodyshop.com and KP Constructions. Construction you can count on. You can find them on the web at www.kp-construction.com. They're still working on Pizer. Hopefully they can stop that gusher because right now he's sitting on top 11 to 5. I think they got him plugged up enough so he's not leaking on the mat anymore. So That's got to be go. tough on the breathing side of things. Yeah. He took, it, took a nice shot on the single. He's got to hold that, pull that leg under, 
See how long he is? He stepped right over, stepped right over Gearing. That's a that's a tough move, and into the takedown position. That was a nice count, very nice counter move. Picks up another two points, 13 to five. Now just hang on, because right now Gehring is it's got to pin it to win it. You want to be careful in this position here, Kurt. You got the lead. You don't want to get too confident and stand up with a guy where he can throw you, you know, and possibly score five points on you or pin you. Right. But so, Gehring's doing the right. I mean, nah. Uh, 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 Pfizer's doing the right thing now. He didn't waste any time. He took a shot right away. Gehring got that single leg. He's got he got his uh, has Gehring's hips pulled under. He's going to come up here, I think, with a two-point takedown. Inside. Which he does. 10 seconds, inside five seconds, and there's the whistle. There's the match. You know, Doug Pizer, Scotts Valley, the winner, 15 to six. And two-time SECAL league champion. Norman's got it. Scotts Valley, Coach Norman of Scotts Valley has got a, a, a good stable of wrestlers, both men and women, so he's yeah, I mean, I think I don't know if Aptos has equal to or greater than the number of women of Scotts Valley, but Norman's <laughs> able to recruit. Yeah, yeah, they uh, he, Reggie does such a great job over there at Aptos High School. You know, they have 50 kids in a room every every day, where a lot of the other kids, I mean, a lot of the other schools don't have that luxury. They have a beautiful new facility, you know, a beautiful theater, beautiful wrestling room. They've got all the stuff right now. Yeah. 182, we start to move up the ladder. Noah Hall from Harbor High School, a senior, and Balden DeSheaves of Scotts Valley. Balden has been, I've seen him now too, this might be year three or four that we've watched him here in the uh, SCCAL championship. This should be an outstanding match also, I would think. Both these guys, uh, I know DeSheva, DeSheva is really strong. And, uh, you know, he's here from the Ukraine and he doesn't speak a lot of, a lot of English, but he uh, he's a darn good wrestler. And yeah, he's got Hall in a troublesome predicament. Yeah. He got that single, took it up in the air, was able to take Tall down to the mat. Both these guys are seniors, so your senior year you want to win that league league title. So yep. they're going to be battling each other the whole time. Uh, the Shivas. 26 and 12, and he's ranked number eight in CCS. He uh, was second at the Peninsula Invitational. He, he, he had that all, all doing that, doing that roll through. It. He did a nice little pirouette. Yeah it's, yeah, it's a nice move if if you can get that guy off of you. Two to nothing is the score. We're in the first. Yeah, the Shiva's period. Hang, the Shiva's hanging on. He's not. Not about to let let Tall go here. Well, I would not. I mean, Hall, you've seen he's big, he's strong, and he's also very, very quick. Yeah. So Baldwin knows that uh, he's going to have to hang on for dear life because this is not an easy opponent. So, uh, Deshiva just got warned for holding holding uh, Tall yes. Tall up because he has to work him down to the mat once he stands up in that rear standing position. You got to work to get that man back down on the mat. Two to one. DeShaves was still in the lead right now. We're in the first period of wrestling. 182 pounders. I'm Kurt Edwards with Pat Lovell. Here at Harbor High School, CTV Sports is proud to bring you the uh, championship of the SCCAL wrestling season. Noah Tall has a green anchor on from Harbor High School and, and uh, Baldan DeShiva has a red anchor on. That's the end of our first period with DeShiva leading Tall here two to one going in the second period. Um, uh, Noah Tall's record is 20 and seven, and uh, he's also had some good tournament tournament placing this year. He also played football. He's an outstanding football player for the Har Harbor I watched Pirates, yeah. Coach Cox liked this young athlete out on this football yeah. field team. Yeah. She's right back on top, Hall. Not where he wants to be, but watch him, watch him try and power he's, his way up. He tried, tried that stand-up, and uh, the Shiva was able to stop him with, on the stand-up. Broke his momentum coming up. Now here's where Tall should bail out of there, get his, get his uh, one-point escape. 
Score hasn't changed just because they wandered outside the circle. These well, officials, Pat, you've already explained that these are great officials. They're doing a good job controlling the action, oh keep, yeah. keeping the action going. Yeah, they're, they're terrific. They're, we've got the best officials in the CCS here today, tonight and the best officials in the state of California. Yeah, we've got Yeshiva call for stall in that rear standing position. He's got to work tall down to the mat. He, he can't stand there behind him. He's trying to lift him, but you got a tall guy. You're trying to lift him. It's tough. Hall's a big lad. As we said, it's 182 pounds. That's a lot of force to take it up. Hall gets out of there, so he's going to be able to take the lead now. And two very equal opponents. He's getting in on that single. Tall's got to do a better job of blocking off. Blocking off, or Deshiva's going to get a takedown on him. He hits that single so darn quick. You know, that Tall doesn't seem to be ready for it. Going for control with the wrist. Inside 30 there seconds goes to go. Tall, nice. with a, tall with a nice move. Tried to high crotch, didn't quite work for him. He couldn't quite get Jeeva to flop over on that. Oh, here comes a headlock. Look out. Yep. Almost I right think, in front of him. I think he knew he think he knew he was gonna lose it, so he just bailed out in the out of bounds. That's a smart thing to do though in wrestling. You're gonna lose that thing. Don't give up a cheap cheap takedown to your opponent. Hall still on top. We're in the second period, three to two in favor of the Harbor Wrestler. Yep. Risty, risty. They're playing risty, risty now. Risty, risty. I want to try and see if I can get to you to twist. Nice single shot there by, by Deshiva again. He doesn't seem to be able to finish to get inside to do anything after he yeah. takes that shot, though. Yeah, he's so quick. So quick he's in there, and he's strong here. Tries a headlock again. Be careful here. Inside 10 seconds. And he and loses it. Referee calls him out. Now look, they landed still in play, but. That was close, that was a very close call. He must have stepped out. Here we come again. One That's thing of that, with that headlock, it's usually you live or die with that thing, you know? If you're gonna go, you better go all the way. Because <laughs> either way, you're gonna be in trouble. You know, it's like, like uh, uh -huh. when you throw a forward pass, you know? Three things could happen. Two of them were bad. bad. Yeah. yeah, my dad's friend, Bo Schimbelker, had that whole routine. And he, <laughs> I remember me having a dinner with Bo, and I said, do you ever pass the ball? And he says, pardon me? I don't pass the potatoes, let alone the ball. <laughs> Here they go. Hall on top. And he is on top in points, three to two. He's got to do something with that wrist now. Can't just hang on there. He's got to get out to the side. There he goes. Tall trying, trying to work to, it. Yeah, trying to work that half off the double double wrist lock. But Desheen see, seems to be working again. I mean, he's doing a good job of neutralizing anything Hall's doing. Now he's trying to get to his feet. Yeah, yeah he's got to get up to your knee position, but, you know, to do anything. You can't do anything while you're on your stomach. You've got to work up. Now he's going to try that tilt right here. You watch him. Tall's got that arm tight. There he goes. He's got that He's got double to, wrist. He's got his hip under him a little more. Pull him up on his on his stomach a little bit more. And get him turned. Oh, nice, nice try. Nice. That was a nice uh, roll try there by by uh, Deshiva. He almost had uh, Tall going over. There he goes with his bar half now. He's got that power half. Get off the side, trying to crank that half. It has to be an uncomfortable position for a wrestler to be in, Pat. Oh. <laughs> yeah, a lot. Ballin doing the best he can to get out. And Hall uh -oh. made a slight mistake by shifting yeah, his body more than he wanted to. Was able to correct it. Oh. That was Ballin that get was a point real, on that one? That was real close. That was real close to an escape right there, but uh, 15. Tall, Tall was able enough to come right after him again before the move was completed. 15 seconds to go in the third period of wrestling. Noah has to hang on. Yeah, he does have to hang on. 
And it looks like like the Shiva's going to his belly here. He's got to get up off his belly and get moving. Oh, he's up now. He's up. Out. Oh, he gets a point. Tie. We have a little bit of a complaint from the coaches yeah. saying that the wrestlers were out, but the point still stands. Yeah. Hall using that leg drive on Brown. Ball oh. the shave and gets him, rolls him over. Inside five seconds, and a oh. pin. Oh. Oh. What, what a, a move. Comeback. What a comeback by Noah Tall. That was terrific. Tied three to three with seconds to go. And he goes for the headlock trip to right to the back for a near fall and a pin. What a great finish. That was terrific. That's wrestling, folks. And that's why these kids work so hard at it. You and cannot it, let down for a second, can no, you? No, it ain't over till it's over. <laughs> so. Babe, I've heard somebody say that before. Just a great job, both of the coaches for Harbor really ingra uh, congratulating <laughs> Noah Hall on a just a fabulous bout. DeSheves has nothing to be ashamed about because he was right in there and just that one little off-balance move that he had. Yeah. And, and Noah took advantage of it, and boom, yeah, he had a pin. Or when they get excited like that, man, they, they go after it, you know. Getting ready for as we step up the ladder a little bit heavy. Frank, I believe it's Frank Graver and Colin McKenzie. McKenzie from Harbor High School. Also like to thank Life Shots. Cut weight, not nutrition. Look them up on the web at www.lifeshots.com. Sid's Smokehouse, Barbecue Pizza and Burgers, the three main foods in Kurt Edwards' entire life right there, folks. Something for the entire family, www.sidsmokehouse.com. Colin McKenzie. Colin McKenzie is the junior from Harbor High School. He'll be wearing the green anklet. His opponent is Frankie Grave from Scotts Valley. He'll be wearing the red anklet. Groves in the black, McKenzie in the uh, green and gold of Harbor. Yeah, this is a sophomore against the junior here. And Frank's got Colin. Colin doing a nice job, smartly steps out of it. <laughs> Working the hands, trying to escape. Don't let go, my friend. You got a wrestler by the tail. <laughs> now we're doing the high man sumo wrestling push off. Yeah, we're not that we're not up that far yet. Oh no, you're yeah, not yet. Yeah, not that. McKenzie nice takes shot. a shot. Nice shot there. Nice recovery by Cohen McKenzie to get off of his stomach there. When he got flattened out, he came right back up to his feet, which he has to do. McKenzie, cat quick. I've watched him wrestle for the last several years and I've watched him improve each and every year. Yeah, Frankie Graves was, uh, is a sophomore and Cole McKenzie is a junior. And uh, Frankie Graves was uh, third in the league last year. So he's been, uh, he's been in this uh, arena before. Graves from Scotts Valley. Still working on it. And you can hear the coaches yelling for the one wrestler to get him off the head. McKenzie doing a nice job of trying to get control by circling. Yeah, nice counter move there by McKenzie. Almost had it. Frankie, Frankie uh, Graves kind of went to his stomach a little bit. It looked like uh, McKenzie was going to come right on around on him. I haven't given up any points, though. We're still at a pair of goose eggs for both of these wrestlers. Yeah. Yes, sir. Still battling up there. These guys come in at the tip the Toledo's at 195. Frankie Graves is a taller, taller of the two, and McKenzie is a thicker of the two. Yep. McKenzie, you know, I've, I've, I'm watching him wrestle. He may be a little thicker, Pat, but he's pretty quick. Yeah, he is. He's very quick, yeah. He uses his feet very well. For all you football coaches out there, if you want to improve your football team, have him wrestle. That's the thing that John Madden said. He said, if I had my way, I'd have all my linemen wrestle. That's a quote from John Madden. That's how important it is. We have a caution on the bottom end, the starting position. 
Graves is going to be on top in the dark singlet from Scotts Valley. McKenzie almost got out of that. Graves need, need trying. To get, need to get your head up off the mat. There you go. Doing a tripod stand up. And he's out of there for one. There we go. Nice job by McKenzie. There's a headlock. Can he oh. bulldog him around? No. Lost it, though. Lost that and lost some. Well, yeah, and he was, almost almost lost uh, two points there, but he was able to come up quick enough. The official did not give him the two points, and they're back on their feet. I thought those he had lost those points, Pat. Yeah. McKenzie, uh, I think McKenzie's pretty sh smart in what he does. He seems to know his, where his body, body position is. Right. Wrestlers go out of bounds, so they'll send it back to the center and start all over again. Second Not round saying of that wrestling. Graves is not smart. He's probably a 4.0 4 student. Scotts Valley, they have a lot of scholars up there. Oh, they do. They enter baccalaureate program that oh, sometimes nice takes shot. some athletes. Nice shot. Nice single. McKenzie fights his way around. Gets almost in a bulldog position. One to nothing is our score, and McKenzie's got the one. Pitching a shutout. He tried, looking for that head, headlock position. And not going to give it to him. Again, these officials do a great job. Their eyes are on the wrestlers. They're making sure they're safe, and they're making sure that the action is clean and continuous. McKenzie almost got around behind Graves on that one. Yeah, he's almost there. He's not quite. Just quite can't get the cut. Quite, quite can't quite get the turn to get around behind him. We're inside. 15 seconds to go here right. in round number two. He's trying to work on that elbow. You notice he shoves the elbow up with his left hand and starts to the left side, trying to get around McKenzie, but he can't quite do it. After two rounds of wrestling or two periods of wrestling. McKenzie's on top, one to nothing. Two grueling rounds of wrestling. This is a baseball game, this is a pitcher's duel. <laughs> Here we go, like, period number three. Again, 195 pounders out on the mat. Another nice. caution on McKenzie. Graves is moving on the bottom, moving on the bottom. Trying to get that single leg position on McKenzie. McKenzie's doing McKenzie's it. He's still in control. McKenzie's not. There we finally get a reverse. 1-1. One, one. Graves had to work for that we, point, Pat. Yeah. We may be in sudden death here. <laughs> I prefer sudden victory, thank yeah. you. Sudden victory. That's right, they changed the name. Yep. Both men appear to be tired. McKenzie goes for a single leg takedown. McKenzie, He's got does hold a, of it. McKenzie does a nice shot on that single. He just can't finish it. Nice move by Graves. Yeah, nice move. He's trying to out of bounds. He just can't quite free that leg, clear that arm, you know. McKenzie's showing me how strong he is because he has just not given up on, on, the, on any of his holds. Yeah. Yeah, you're just a, you're a little short on the arm length than that. If he was a little bit longer, he probably would have had those moves. That makes him a great offensive guard. Yeah. Nice single, nice single there by uh, by Graves, real nice. Oh. McKenzie yeah, tried okay. to go for it. Graves with some points, needed points, comes three to on, one. Comes up on top. We are in the third and final round of this oh. bout. Nice leg lift. Oh, Takes nice move. move, nice move by Ties. McKenzie. That was slick. He picked up that ankle and rolled back into, into Graves. Graves went right on down. Ties it up. Now can Graves get out of it? Up by one. In 20 seconds to go. McKenzie looking for a point. Graves looking to hang on. Oh, oh Inside McKenzie. 10. Oh, out of bounds, he almost had it. Could have almost turned that corner on it. He would have had a two point takedown. Six seconds to go, Pat. This is gonna be an exciting six there seconds. He goes.
McKenzie's got to take a last ditch effort here. They got one more tick of the clock. One more tick of the clock. And that's there it. it is. Good match between those two lads. With, Cole, with uh, Frankie Graves of Scotts Valley winning the match uh, four to three over Colin McKenzie of Harbor High School. We've seen a lot of exciting matches so far here tonight, Pat, and that might be the best. The best. Of the heavy, heavier weight, well, I don't know. That one before was pretty darn good with. Hall and yeah. DeSheaves, yes. That was a yeah, great one was. with Hall pinning DeSheaves with about inside five seconds to go in the third period. That was one heck of a, a wrestling match. You're right. Coming up, 220 pounders. Adrian Galindo and Ryan Renteria. Galindo from Santa Cruz. Renteria is a senior from Santa Cruz High School, being the red, oh. being the red anklet. He's 20 and 10 on the season, and third got third at the Colt Invitational. His, a, his opponent is Adrian Galindo from Aptos High School. He's the 10th grader. He's nine and five on the season. Uh, wants to have his own business called Fluffy's Flower Shop. So good luck to him. Fluffy Flower. This sounds like a pet making yeah. or cleaning agency. I don't know. Both these big boys going at it. Yeah. Renter, I think both of these both these lads played football. Oh, nice move by, by right. Galindo with a counter by Renteria. Renteria's, Renteria's got him in trouble. If he can just hold it. Oh, Ray Renteria! SCCL champion to 220 pound. In less than a minute, the match is over. Over Adrian Galindo wow. of Aptos. You make a mistake and it is quick to have happen. Real quick as we get ready to go for the big, big, big boy boys. Here come the sumos, folks. Uh -huh. 285 pounders, our sponsors, Life Shots, Cut Weight, Not Nutrition, Sit Smokehouse, Barbecue, Pizza, Burger, something for the entire family. Aptos High School Athletics, teacher, teaching youth important lessons on and off the mats, craft, body sh shop, locally owned and operated, and KP Construction, construction you can count on. These are our great sponsors for tonight. The last one of the night, folks. Marquez from Aptos. And Gardner from Scotts Valley. Scotts Valley waited all this way to bring out the big boys, huh? Here we go. Daniel Gardner from Santa Cruz High School is a junior. Is a record of 15 and eight. Coached by John Corona. And Alex Marquez was a league champion last year at heavyweight. Marquez, outstanding athlete at Aptos High School, football player, uh, all CCS. He is uh, he is quite an animal at 285 pounds. Marquez. Nice ankle pick there by uh, by Marquez. Gardner does a good job getting out of it and standing right back up. Can he turn and get out? Can he escape? Marquez has a green ankle on and uh, Gardner has the red ankle on. He is, uh, Alex Marquez is 28 and eight on the season, ranked number five in CCS. And he's got a lot of firepower. Marquez on top. Gardner tries to get out, gets pushed right to the, right to the mat. Use that near arm crush, he'll pull, pull that near arm down and there he goes into his arm bar, trying to work his arm bar. He's got, it, got it fairly tight now. Right in front of his pack. He's working slow, slow. Pat, this size it. fast, fast doesn't work. Yeah, you got to keep it. Oh, here comes a half. Oh, he had the arm in a in a precarious position. They called a uh, potentially potentially dangerous hold. No penalty. Just break it before anyone is, be, can become injured. Great officiating here. Safety is primary in these officials. Also, knowing the rules. Good job by all three of the officials tonight. Gardner trying to get out. Marquez Whoa. takes him up and over the falls. There's some horsepower right there, I'll tell you that. He picked Gardner up in the air. Marquez just picked him up and put him down on his head. Marquez has got that nice little mask on. That's one of the better masks, and he wins. Yeah. Marquez was able to get Gardner turned over enough for the fall. And a two-time 
Two-time league champion now, Alex Marquez from Aptos High School. Folks, that wraps it up for the 2013-2014 SCCAL Wrestling Finals. Pat, you and I will do really quickly go through the winners for everybody. Uh, we'll go all the way back to the 106. You remember those guys? Those are the gnats that fly around this, <laughs> this place. Yeah. Ian Elsie from Aptos, 16-0 over Joe Castileo. Jason Silva with a pin or a fall in the second against... Isha Rodriguez of Aptos. Ramon Zacharias, which had a forfeit. Dominic Paris decided not to wrestle. Jed Kraft, 14 to nine over Gio Zacharias in the 126 pound class. On a 132 pound class, Miguel Barranco of Aptos with a pin in the first round over Jesse Castillo, a 138. Had Nick Reyes eight to two. Nick Reyes of Scotts Valley over Adam Dorney of Aptos one forty five. Dan Velez a pin. He Dan of Aptos High School pin Matt Harmon of Soquel one forty five. One fifty two. Jacob Blair Aptos eight three decision over Aaron De Carlos. One hundred and sixty pound. Brian Batista, one of the better wrestlers I've seen come through Harbor High School in a long, long time. And no, I'm not forgetting Dakota. He was a darn good wrestler, yeah, too. he was. Very good. Batista with a fall. He beat Andy Ramirez of Scotts Valley. Doug Pizer of Scotts Valley, 15-6 to six over Mitch Gearing. Noah Hall with a spectacular fall with inside five seconds to go in the third period over Baldwin DeShees of Scotts Valley. Frank Gray's four to three victory over Colin McKenzie in the 195. And the 220 pound, Ryan Renteria with a first round fall over at Adrian Galindo. And we just found the winner of the 285 pound class and that is Alex Marquez as he picked Daniel Gardner up and went over the falls, putting him on his back. Those are your winners on a great night of wrestling here at Harbor High School. It really was, they were very active. I think the kids really put on a good show for the crowd and uh, they all did well and we wish them well in the Central Coast Section Tournament coming up next week at Independence High School. Uh, we wish them well there and uh, we're gonna see some of these guys at the state tournament, I know that. So um, best of luck to them and uh, been a great season. Well, again, I'd like to thank our sponsors that uh, Help CTTV put this wonderful show on. Sponsors are Life Shots, Cut Weight, Not Nutrition. You can find them on the web at lifeshots.com. Sid Smokehouse, barbecue, pizza, and burgers, something for the entire family. They're on the web at sidsmokehouse.com. Aptos High Athletics, teaching your youth important lessons on and off the mat. Find them on the web at aptoshs.net. Craft Body Shop, quality work, quality people, www.craftbodyshop.com. Dot com and KP Construction. Construction you can't count on. Find them on the web at www.kp-construction.com. Pat, any final words you got for us? Go uh, SCCAL. I like it. Go SCCAL. I'm Kurt Edwards for Pat Lovell from Harbor High School, where we just wrapped up the 13-14 SCCAL Wrestling Championship. Good night, everybody. Support your local high school sports.